Geologists have proposed that the term Anthropocene, or the age of man for this period in history of the planet, which follows an environmentally stable Holocene period. And this enormous exchange, the Columbian Exchange, ended the separation of the continents and effectively recreated Pangaea. It was an ecological explosion, unlike anything before it for millions of years, um, arguably the biggest event in the history of life since the death of the dinosaurs. I would say that probably economic pursuits may be some of the most important and, and some of the most impactful drivers behind these changes that we've seen and that we've now referred to as the Anthropocene. You know, whatever is looming right there, it is uh, the fact that we're now seven billion people, we're moving rapidly into a much, much larger population. The largest childbearing cadre uh, in the history of the Earth is on Earth right now, and the decisions that they make about the size of their families and the spacing of their children is going to determine whether we go to eight and a half or 10 or 12 billion people. We have a long history of using up energy sources, burning whales, burning trees, and finding another one. We have whales and trees because we burn fossil fuels. We can see a sustainable energy system now. And we can see getting to that sustainable energy system without changing the world so much that we don't recognize it and we make it really hard to live on this planet. And good science provides a roadmap to get there. Thank you know, there's a forum here that the Smithsonian ought to be carrying forward for the health of our democracy. What is our common future and what is the Smithsonian's contribution to that? There's something that's gone missing in our culture. Like at the very core, there's a sort of sterility that we have embraced. And uh, it's something that I'm really interested in trying to reconnect with, our, uh, our, our sacred connection with, with the world. We've, uh, we've, we've lost our spirit. And, and, the, and I think that, to me, is the central cause of all of these other problems that we look out there. You know, if we look out and see our, our, uh, the overfishing of our fish populations or the destruction of our forests or the destruction of our mountains for coal, like, to me, those aren't the problems. Those are all symptoms of a problem. And I, when I look inside those birds, I sort of see this incredibly powerful symbol for what that problem is. It's something that's not happening out there. It's something that's happening in here. If you think about what's happened in the lifetime of many of us in this room, the major changes in the country, the civil rights movement, the consumer movement, the environmental movement, the women's movement, none of those came because there were decisions made in Washington about that was the way to go. It came because of the determination and organization of people at the grassroots.